Okay. All right. We are live. We are all set. Okay, guys. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is our latest Ultralytics live session with Glenn, myself, and Lakshanta here. Lakshanta is an engineer at Seed Studio, and he's here to tell us a little bit about uh, how Yolo V8 is performing on edge devices like the super popular Jetson Nano. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Seed Studio. Thank you, Glenn. I'm very excited to uh, attend this uh, uh, talk today. So actually, I'm, uh, I'm Lakshanta and I'm an application uh, engineer at uh, Seed Studio. So I mainly focus on uh, embedded systems, IoT and AI. And also in my work, I develop uh, different demos and do the documentations, tutorials uh, for those products. So I have a bachelor's in electronics and information engineering. And after I start, uh, finished my uh, bachelor's, I joined uh, Seed Studio. So uh, mainly I use, I, I work with uh, Arduino and Raspberry Pi products. Like I used to work with Arduino and uh, Raspberry Pi products uh, before, but now uh, my main uh, focus uh, has been uh, the NVIDIA Jetson products. So, so uh, yeah. So now I would like to uh, introduce a little bit about uh, Seed Studio. Uh, so uh, I will just share my screen right now. Uh, okay. Yeah. So actually Seed, uh, Seed Studio is a IoT hardware partner and we, uh, we started in 2008 uh, and we have partnered with uh, more than 470,000 global IoT developers. And we have also uh, closely uh, worked closely with uh, leading chipset companies uh, to provide uh, thousands of open source uh, so, uh, modules uh, for rapid prototyping and also help scale their projects with agile manufacturing services and uh, global distribution networks. So actually we recently uh, announced this uh, roadmap of an advanced perception system of modules and devices and solutions. So uh, mm -hmm. on the Raspberry Pi uh, day, the Pi day, the 314th, right? So that's when we had this uh, uh, event where we announced all our exciting products that are releasing in uh, 2023. And uh, we aim to bring uh, system integrators, a full toolkit of sensing, networking and edge computing to leverage di digital transformation for industries, and uh, these releases are, uh, will be av available uh, in the coming uh, months in 2023. And at the end of this webinar, uh, so we, that will be one of our takeaways. So uh, I will uh, give uh, like a link to this. Uh, we have kind of like a product catalog where you can uh, go through all the uh, products that we will be releasing uh, in the coming months. <laughs> so, uh, and also uh, we have focused uh, on embedded AI now because uh, previously uh, we have focused a lot around uh, the uh, Arduino and the embedded uh, system like Raspberry Pis, but now we want to focus more on the NVIDIA Jetson product line because we, we think the AI mm -hmm. is the future and embedded a edge AI is uh, what uh, we want to focus on. So we are actually uh, an NVIDIA Elite partner and we also provide full product line from, uh, you can see imaging sensors, LIDARs and development kits career boards and full systems. So we also address custom solutions needs through uh, hardware customizations. And also we partner with uh, ISVs and algorithm communities to drive ever growing AI, uh, AI applications. So that's what we want to achieve uh, in 2023. And also I want to mention that we have partnered with your Ultralytics a uh, couple of uh, months back, I think uh, with, uh, uh, we, we, uh, with YOLO V5. So uh, that's right. We, uh, we, yeah, we, we did some uh, we did some uh, integration uh, on the Yolo V5 with Yolo V5 on the Jetson uh, Nano and the Xavier NX, and we also prepared some uh, you know uh, tutorials uh, on the official Ultralytics uh, uh, documentation. So so I think uh, now uh, it's time. It's it's nice to be back uh, to talk uh, you know together with uh, Glenn and your uh, with Ultralytics. Uh, to talk yeah. further about uh, our edge AI uh, solutions. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, this is all pretty exciting. And interestingly enough, my interactions with Seed Studio personally and Ultralytics uh, go back much further than YOLO. So yeah. Ultralytics initially got started doing particle physics for the US government. We worked under a few different intelligence agencies on anti-neutrino detectors. 
And as part of that, we started building uh, our own hardware for these detectors, which included circuit boards. So I got very familiar with uh, a circuit board layout tool called Altium. And I started creating these little circuit boards, which uh, eventually got more and more complex. And uh, when I was searching for manufacturers for these PCBs, printed circuit boards, as they're called, uh, C popped up and uh, they had a few different offerings there. And, uh, and so we started getting some circuit boards back from Seed a long time ago. I think this was back in 2016. Uh, so this is in the very early days of Ultralytics before we had ever gotten into AI. And I remember I was very surprised when I started YOLO V5 and a few months in, somebody asked a question and I, I went over, they provided a link to, to a Seed forum. And I went over and it looks like Seed had uh, like a demo prototype for like YOLO V5 running on edge devices. I was really excited. Uh, because uh, we sort of reacquainted ourselves in a completely separate business category with completely separate technology. Uh, so, so it was really exciting. And, uh, and I'm a big fan of what Seed is doing here on, on the edge devices. So uh, the most popular edge devices are Raspberry Pis, probably. Uh, these are so cheap, but they don't come with GPUs. So you can run YOLO models on these um, and you'll get some results. Uh, but you won't be able to, for example, run a YOLO model in real time from a, a streaming video. Uh, or you could, but uh, you'd have to sample very sparsely, maybe like one frame per second at a low image resolution. And so NVIDIA's come along, most famously known for uh, very expensive uh, energy hogging GPUs that cost thousands of dollars and plug into your computer and help you train models. But they also have a lineup of low power devices. Uh, Jetson Nano is the lowest power and the smallest one of these. So it's more expensive than a Raspberry Pi, uh, but not much so. I think it, it comes in at about $100. Uh, and you can, you can get these from a few different places, but Seed has done an amazing job of going one step further. Uh, so Seed offers kind of hardware combinations uh, that pair, for example, Raspberry Pis with Jetson Nanos. And they also take care of uh, what's called like the firmware and the software. So this makes it much easier to get started with YOLO. And... Uh, we've worked closely with them, Ultralytics and Seed together, to make sure that YOLO V5 models work out of the box when you buy a Jetson Nano from Seed, uh, in that they're optimized, so you get the best performance. So there's no simple task, and I think Seed's done a, a great job in uh, in this partnership to to make sure that people can get started really quickly with YOLO, which has always been uh, one of my big dreams, is to just make this so easy that it just works, kind of like what Jobs used to say. I don't think we're there yet. It's sort of uh, like a mirage in the distance, but we're heading in that direction and it makes me happy. So I'm, I'm a big fan of what Seed's doing. And, uh, and I think just being in the vision space itself really lends the YOLO models to run on edge devices, which is really different than what you see, for example, in language models that are like so big and so complex that they need to be run in the cloud, typically through APIs. But in the vision space, companies can run their own models. They can run them right there on the edge, even in very low power devices. So pretty exciting. Uh, people are running YOLO models everywhere in the cloud on edge, and uh, we're making it easier than ever. And uh, Lexanth is here to actually show some benchmarks, I think. So these live demos are always like a little risky, but I think he's going he's gonna to show us a little bit about how this works. He's going to share his screen, and uh, we're going to cross our fingers in and make sure that goes right. Yeah. So I think before moving that, to that, I think we can talk a little bit about AJI. What do you think? Okay, yeah, so, yeah. Let's let's do a little more intro then to help people understand. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think, think some uh, of our viewers yeah. are experts, but some of them are just getting started too. So it always helps to kind of start from the basics and explain uh, like how this got started and the benefits of edge AI also over cloud. Yeah. So I, I think like when you use edge AI, I think uh, I think one of the most important thing that we want to focus is about the data security and privacy, right? Because uh, because everything is happening at the edge, and you're not you're not sending any data to the cloud, so and also like you can have a, a low latency with uh, with, uh, with real time analytics. So th that is something that also uh, can achieve uh, when you run at the edge, and also uh, you can uh, reduce the internet bandwidth, right? Because normally, like if you wanna, uh, because earlier, like mm -hmm. if you wanna like uh, perform AI, you wanna like you know maybe subscribe to a a uh, cloud provider where the inferencing will happen on the cloud. So that time uh, you need to provide, uh, maybe they have like kind of like a subscription basis plan where you want to like pay them and then, you know, uh, get their service. But running at the edge can really like cost, like make your cost uh, down as well. Yeah. So, so I think these, these are one of the like uh, 
uh, advantage that I see, uh, you know, uh, running uh, AI at the edge. And uh, NVIDIA uh, Jetson, uh, like, really helps to, to achieve that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Like, there's there's yeah. a number of different benefits here. Privacy concerns are, of course, like, uh, one of the main ones. You don't have to yeah. send your data anywhere. You, you get the result right where the data exists. Uh, there's also latency, like you mentioned. There's also cost. Uh, if you have, say, a small experiment, it doesn't cost you a lot to send those pictures to the cloud, get those images processed, and get the results back. But when you're considering, say, scaling like a very large solution to maybe thousands of cameras, uh, then your cloud expenses are, are definitely going to rise. And we've had uh, experience with this ourselves. In the early days of, of our website and of Yola, we put an API out there so people could upload pictures to our website and, and see results with Yola. And we built this like auto scaling cloud solution. It was really cool. It worked okay. too well, actually. Somebody figured out how to send a lot of pictures and uh, Google scaled our, our cloud instances a lot. And we ended up running millions of inferences in a few days. Uh, and we got a bill for thousands of dollars. So uh, <laughs> the cloud solutions are very scalable, uh, but they're also uh, potentially very expensive. And running devices on the edge allows you to control those costs, put a cap on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also like, uh, yeah, I think uh, we had another uh, webinar before, a uh, couple of months back, Elaine from Seed Studio. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we, she attended this YOLO vision, uh, uh, yeah, that conference. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah, YOLO vision is yeah. our big event every September. Yeah. I mean, there was the first yeah. one last year. Yeah. I say so every I think, September, yeah. but we just done it once. So, <laughs> so the next one is yeah. coming up September 2023. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are making another appearance. <laughs> yeah, so I think we, we can maybe uh, attach a link to that webinar later in, uh, for, at the end of this, uh, you know, uh, this YouTube video so that, so that. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Because Elaine actually gave, gave a lot, like more, more uh, uh, insights into all the hardware, all the products, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that would be more helpful for the community uh, to learn more about the uh, Jetson products that we uh, mm -hmm. offer. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, today, so actually I have uh, a product with me, our latest uh, Jetson product. So it is actually based on uh, the Jetson Orin NX. So so you mentioned oh, okay. uh, Jetson so started a, with Jetson. Yeah, this is actually yeah, the latest this one. This is a bit up the yeah. Jetson tier. So, so can you yeah. tell us a little bit about the entire Jetson lineup and what the different price exactly. points and powers of each device are? Yeah, for sure. So actually Jetson started with uh, the Jetson Nano that we, that normally people that's what uh, like if someone want to step into the jetson ecosystem the first uh, jetson that would th they would get their hands on would be the jetson nano so so that is where it starts and then it went to the jetson xavier nx and then uh, came the jetson tx2 platform tx2 nx and then after that uh, now the latest uh, uh, platform is the jetson orin platform right so it is based on the Ampere uh, GPU architecture, the NVIDIA Ampere architecture. And uh, oh, if, we, if okay. we look at the, the, the TOPS performance, right, the TOPS. So mm -hmm. it would be like the Nano would have 0 0.5 TOPS and the Xavier NX would have like uh, 21 TOPS, right? But mm -hmm. the Orin, uh, Orin series has Orin Nano. So I can show you like... Uh, oh, Orin also the, comes in Nano size. Yeah. So, uh, oh, okay. Um, yeah. So I'll show you the, yeah, this one. Uh, okay. So this is the Orin Nano. Yeah, so actually the Orin series has Orin Nano, uh, has two versions, 4GB and 8GB, uh, with 20 tops and 40 tops, right? And the Orin oh, NX wow. okay. has 8 and 16GB with 70 tops and 100 tops. And the AGX Orin, which is like the biggest, uh, which is the highest one, it has 200 tops, the 32, and uh, the 64 GB has 275 tops, right? So, so you're saying the original so, Jetson devices had 0 0.5, and now the latest The Nano is, is 0 0.5. Yeah, Z okay. Nano is 0 0.5. Yeah, Nano okay, is 0 so 0.5. Nvidia, so NVIDIA yeah. offers the Nano for sale still, but they also have the Jetson or Nano also. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Right, yeah. But uh, the, the difference in performance is, is, is very much compared with the the Jetson Nano and the Orin Nano, because Orin is an entire different uh, architecture, right? Um, yeah, so the, the way I usually read this is yeah. uh, I'm more familiar with iPhone neural engines. And so 
Apple's yeah. been doing a great job there also on increasing the tops. And I think they're a little under 20, maybe like 16 or 17 these days. And that yeah. that is enough to run the biggest Yolo V8 models uh, at real time, like on our iOS app, for example. So 20 tops yeah. is a lot of performance. Uh, and I'm guessing it's something that costs a lot less than an iPhone. Yeah, yeah. And so, so what I have now is our latest uh, recomputer J4012. Uh, which is based on the Jetson uh, uh, Orin NX 16 GB, this particular uh, module, right? So this mm, is okay. actually the, the device I have right now. So as I said, like we provide the entire, like uh, full systems, right? So it comes with this beautiful enclosure. And uh, so once you open it, you see the, you see the device inside. And, okay. Uh, so it's basically like mounted on this on this board, and I have uh, removed all the screws, so you can take it out from the from the enclosure. And then, uh, if you take it out, uh, we can see uh, the device itself, right? So basically, this is the uh, system on module. This 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 one yeah. with a heatsink on top of it. And then what we do is we manufacture this uh, career board. This uh, this career board. This is what we manufacture and uh, to support the, the system on module. And then uh, we provide the enclosure and we, we make it as a full system uh, where it, it, it's very easy, uh, it's ready to get started with, with the product. And also, uh, so you can see there's an SSD uh, as well, the NVMe SSD. So, so like uh, when you buy this J4012, it comes with the Jet, NVIDIA Jetpack system already uh, pre-installed. So, uh, hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. You. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here. So when you buy this uh, device, it comes with the SSD already pre-installed with the Jetpack system. So uh, because normally, like when you buy, uh, when you uh, get a Jetson device, uh, sometimes uh, you need to get around yourself uh, installing the flashing the system to the device, and it takes a lot of time and uh, get time to tinker around. So mm -hmm. when you when you have this kind of uh, solution. So uh, you just plug it and then uh, SSH into the device and you are ready to go with the device and just uh, start uh, uh, deploying all your applications into uh, the device because uh, this will come with all the uh, necessary uh, like uh, libraries like uh, like CUDA, TensorT, QDNN <laughs> and all the PyTorch and everything will be uh, like already uh, pre-installed on this particular okay. uh, SSD, right? And uh, yeah, so so you can see like, it has like four USB 3.2 connectors, uh, mm -hmm. one HDMI, there's a power connector, and there's a ethernet uh, connector. And also it has two uh, CSI 15 lane MIPI CSI uh, camera connectors, right? Because you no, know, if you want to do some vision projects, so some people want to use uh, maybe a USB camera into the device, but mm -hmm. there will be some applications where you want to have a compact system where you have some uh, CSI cameras connect to this, right? And then have the camera connecting outside so that you will not be using the external uh, connectors, right? So that's mm -hmm. why the CSI uh, connectors okay. are uh, in included uh, to make it a compact. Maybe like if you want to make a robot with this device, right? Uh, then right, it, right. you can make a compact compact device, uh, including the CSI cameras uh, for the detection purposes. And also it has this, uh, uh, the M.2 key so that you can have like, Wi-Fi connectivity. You can connect uh, Wi-Fi uh, Bluetooth module into this uh, slot so that you can enable Wi-Fi uh, and Bluetooth on this device. Uh, and also it has a 40 pin GPIO, as we all know, it also comes with the Raspberry Pi and all most or like most of the embedded devices come with this kind of 40 pin GPIO, right? If you want to connect uh, like some external sensors uh, to interface uh, with, with this device, right? So yeah, and uh, what else? Yeah, it has a CAN, CAN connector if you want to do some CAN projects. Okay. And, uh, and at, at last, I think it has an RTC, right? So you can just connect a battery into the device and uh, yeah, you can, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it about the, about this <laughs> J4012, the recomputer J4012, which has like 100 tops uh, AI performance. And also at last, uh, yeah, it also has like uh, FCC, CE, uh, ROHS and UKCA uh, certifications. So if you wanna like go into production, uh, you can easily go like uh, into production with all these uh, uh, certifications uh, or, or with 
already in the device, like especially for uh, for industries, right? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it seems like everything is like really tightly integrated there, and yeah, it, it's almost plug and play. Uh, and yeah. What kind of cameras could we connect to this? Yeah. So uh, we have tested with the IMX two one nine cameras, which which is quite popular in the in the embedded world, like people use with the embedded devices, IMX two one nine, and also IMX four seven seven cameras. Yeah. Uh, uh, when it comes to the CSI cameras, right? Okay. And uh, maybe uh, there would be some other cameras. Uh, if you want to use with this device, maybe it will not work. Um, it, it, maybe it's because like it will need ad an additional driver, right? So if you load okay. the driver into the device, then for sure, uh, that camera will also work. But for the IMX219, it will work out of the box uh, after you connect the camera. And for the USB ones, uh, yeah, that's fine. Like you can connect any USB camera. Uh, it will work as long as the USB camera is uh, uh, is supported by Linux. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is really uh, like a computer all in one. Like you've got a CPU, a GPU, uh, memory, exactly. yeah. internet connection, everything in here. Exactly. So it, it got 16 GB uh, DDR5, LP DDR5 memory uh, with the uh, with the GPU, the NVIDIA. Uh, yeah. So that that's the one which uh, can achieve the 100 tops. And actually, for the storage, uh, yeah, it got the SSD, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You need to install this because uh, earlier NVIDIA used to have the EMMC on the system or module, for example, the Xavier NX in the past, uh, it had an EMMC for the production module, but the production module of Orin NX does not have EMMC. They, uh, that's why okay. uh, like hardware partners mm -hmm. like us. So this is a really powerful device that uh, you can yeah. get uh, quite affordably at uh, really tremendous performance here at 20 tops. Yes. Um, no, no, this is 100 tops. You can get started yeah. uh, right now. Yeah. So Seed has this uh, available right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can uh, visit. Uh, yeah, I will attach uh, a link. Uh, how can I? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So if you go to seedstudio.com. <laughs> oh, <wow>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you can, that's, with, uh, that's with three E's, right? <laughs> yeah, with, with three E's, yeah. And then. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can. Okay, so let me ask you a question. The yeah. models then that are running on these devices, we want to export these into Tensor RT format, right? Just like any exactly. other NVIDIA GPU. Okay. Exactly. Actually, Tensor RT is very important when it comes to uh, uh, the uh, the NVIDIA Jetson products because, like, we are talking about uh, like uh, running AI at the edge and use, utilizing Tensor RT on the NVIDIA Jetson will make sure that uh, all of the hardware computing is uh, uh, used, yeah. Otherwise, we, right, right. Otherwise, we will like just uh, you know uh, waste. <laughs> we'll not be exploiting the hardware, hardware, hardware then. resources, yeah. right? So, so yeah. we want to like utilize all the resources. So that's why I think uh, TensorRT will be very useful. Uh, yeah, of course. So I guess it's a slight technicality, technology. but we can run really any format. Uh, but if we export to TensorRT, then we'll be optimized uh, for these CUDA edge devices. Exactly, so and the performance an difference will be like pretty, substantially, uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. substantially yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have we have YOLO benchmarks on YOLO v5 and YOLO v8 that we run every day uh, on different devices, different hardware. And of course, what we see is that for CUDA devices, you can't beat TensorRT. It's going to produce the best results. Um, we yeah. natively offer of course, FP32, but also half precision FP16 export. And I think we're working on in-date export. So this, uh, this, this raises an interesting question though. TensorRT is the only format in YOLO that requires you to export on that specific hardware. So in this case, uh, we would need to transfer our YOLO model to the edge device first, and then run an export to TensorRT format uh, locally on the device, right? To get the the full benefit exactly. of the TRT export. Yeah, yeah. otherwise, okay. actually, yeah, you need to uh, also for uh, serializing the engine file, uh, you need to serialize on the on the device that you're going to deserialize as well. For example, if you serialize the engine on an XGV NX device, you cannot deserialize the engine on the Orin NX. 
it would like uh, it it would not deserialize so the you need to make sure that the engine is generated on the device that you want to uh, you know uh, at mm -hmm. the end uh, do the inference yeah yeah that is okay, very let important. me ask you let me ask you a, i've yeah. always been curious about this uh, since yeah. i'm not exactly a trt expert if i have one mm -hmm. horn device and i i export my uh, my yolo model there i have it in trt format can I then take that TRT model and let's say I have a thousand cameras deployed in my company. Can I just use that and deploy that same model of these thousand devices or uh, even the or same device? Any, yeah. Same exact device. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's no problem there. It's just that. No problem there. As long the as class, the device, right? uh, the same, right? As long as okay. the, as I, as I, to, as I showed you before, the Ori, Xavi NX, Ori Nano, uh, AGB, Ori, uh, Ori NX, all these different, right. uh, uh, architectures, right? different, uh, yeah, architectures. Uh, if as long as you you ex uh, you deploy it to the exact same architecture on another device, it's mm -hmm. going to work for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. What yeah. about the what about the last frontier here, which is int eight export? Uh, we support int eight export in a few different formats, but it's always a little tricky, yeah. and some of them require uh, more information. Like for example, the images that you're going to be running on to really get uh, dynamic ranges for quantization. Is, is TRT and data export simple or uh, like how, how would you describe the process? What do you guys usually run uh, your models with over at seed? Are they in date models, FP16 models? Yeah, actually for now we are running the FP32. FP uh, oh, just FP32, okay. Yeah, actually, yeah, we, but we have done benchmarks for the FP16 and in 8 as well. Um, mm -hmm. We have just done the benchmarks, right? But uh, I think for int eight, what is uh, what is important is to do the calibration, right? That's the step uh, uh, for the calibration for the int eight precision. So, so I think as long as you do the calibration, uh, you can uh, you know uh, okay uh, run on int eight precision, right? Yeah. It okay. So, so the calibration is yeah. an important step then. Okay. Right. And this is because because yeah, yeah. because otherwise uh, you will lose accuracy. We do yeah, the calibration absolutely. step and we've seen this before. Uh, to, to you know re uh, retain the accuracy. Otherwise, uh, be because as we move down, like as mm -hmm. we try to you know uh, mm -hmm. make it fast, there will be a little bit of compromise, right? Because yeah, uh, yeah. when you're coming from SP32 to 16 to int8, uh, as we uh, you know uh, uh, do the make the latency low, uh, there will mm -hmm. be a little bit of compromise in accuracy. So to to reduce that, we are we do have to do the calibration process. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Uh, a lot of the times in AI or in engineering in general, it's not so much about finding the very best uh, performance, but about finding the right compromise. So what we see in the AI space is that as we get into quantization uh, and pruning, and even quantization where we're training, oftentimes, uh, you know, it makes sense to sacrifice, say like 1% in accuracy if you can double your speed. So I think a lot of people would be happy with that sort of compromise. And that's, that's sort of what happens once you discretize to in date. Uh, of course, with in date, you've only got 256 different values that a parameter can take. And because of that, uh, to get the right dynamic range, say for a lookup table, uh, I think it, it requires uh, a bit of an extra step that you don't have with FP16. FP16 can still represent a pretty wide dynamic range. And what we see in our benchmarks, uh, at least on CPU, is that FP16 performance is identical, uh, really to FP32 performance. But yeah, going beyond that, right. going to int date is a little more tricky. And yeah. we also Actually, see though, yeah, yeah, like for go TensorRT, on. just going to FP16 alone will double your speed for the most part. Uh, so it's a, <laughs> and there's yeah. there's almost no accuracy loss there, or no no real negligible kind of uh, material accuracy loss. So that's a really easy decision to make. Uh, so I would, I would recommend anybody that runs TRT models anywhere, uh, especially on edge devices, of course, that are lower power, should be exporting at half precision. And we make that really easy with YOLO V8. You just use a half argument. So you just say YOLO export and just say half. Uh, and if you're running that in Python, just say half equals true. It's that easy. And also, like, uh, I will quickly show you the device uh, that I mentioned yeah, before. That's, this is the okay. J4012 device that I was talking about. Uh, the okay. one with the uh, 100 tops and uh, if you go to seedstudio.com uh, and okay. search for j4012 you will be able to find the device i just uh, explained uh, showcase okay. a few minutes ago yeah so this is the what about device. the what about the yeah. very entry level or a nano device the four gigabyte one let's see yeah so the, the nano price point be, on that i think yeah. that one might be more popular 
Yeah. So the nano uh, is this one, right? So we have the nano as well. Okay. And that's the dev kit, right? That's the most basic okay. one. Right. Okay. Right. For 149, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. So uh, to get more performance, yeah, you need to pay more. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's uh, how it is. Yeah. Okay. So, let's see. So this time has been flying yeah. here. So I think. Let's see. I think you have some benchmarks you'd like to share, and for sure, for sure, that yeah. will pick a few of these uh, questions from the YouTube channel. If you have any questions, yeah. drop them for us there in the YouTube chat, and we'll pick a few to answer. Yeah. So yeah. So I have been doing some benchmarks uh, last week. Uh, okay. So let me share that. Okay. Let's see. Are these available uh, like on a on a website too? Uh, I, I, I'm uh, not at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do a blog. <laughs> oh, but actually I've seen these on, 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 seen these on social media. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think yeah. you shared these I on just, LinkedIn, right? Or maybe Twitter. Yeah. I just shared <laughs> on uh, yeah, LinkedIn and Twitter. Just uh, this <laughs> okay, photo. Great, great. <laughs> but, okay. but I will make like a blog maybe yeah, this week. Yeah, we should and, definitely make uh, a blog. Yeah. yeah. I think the users would love yeah. to see this. Okay. So, all right. We've got so, the different size models. X is yeah. the biggest on the top and then N is the so, so this is the AGX uh, Orin. Uh, uh, okay, I cannot see this. Uh, wait. Okay. So this is so the Yolo. Orin 30, 32 yeah. GB, the device. Okay. And you can see that these are the models, YOLO V8N. I benchmark okay. from V8N to S to M to L to X, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are, these for are the this five, one, I use five the, sizes. Yeah, five sizes. And uh, I use the TRT exec uh, tool. That comes mm -hmm. with uh, the TensorRT. When you install TensorRT on the mm -hmm. NVIDIA Jetson device, uh, this TRT exec tool will also be there. I think it's okay. not just for the Jetson, it also for like like the Linux, just the basic Ubuntu. If you install the Tensor, if you have TensorRT, the TRT exec tool will be included inside, right? So mm -hmm. okay. uh, using that, I have benchmarked. So you can see that uh, as we move up uh, to Viola V8X, so with mm. int eight precision, uh, we can have like a seventy-five uh, tops, right? Frames per second. Uh, yeah, which is uh, FPS. Yeah, frames per second, which is pretty impressive for for an. And is this device. at uh, six forty by six forty image size, batch size one? Yes, I'm assuming exactly. Okay. So this is using the the default uh, YOLO models included in the Ultranetics mm -hmm. repo, right? So I have directly the Coco downloaded. Chain models. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I have downloaded okay. them from the website, the Ultralytics, and then I've benchmarked them uh, over here. So I think, uh, as Glenn mentioned before, there's not much of difference between, yeah. So uh, you can see the PyTorch. So first I I did the PyTorch test without any TensorRT optimization. You can see uh, if you mm -hmm. compare this with Int8, there's a lot of difference. Yeah, there's a drastic difference. <laughs> yeah, Int8 uh, is. The data is really, boring. and actually, like what we see here on yellow yeah. 8x is going from FP32 to FP16 is exactly doubling the speed, like like what we've also seen. So, yeah, so that's uh, it's pretty impressive. Go, you can you double your speed by going to half precision, and uh, you can maybe improve it by two thirds. Not quite double it, but uh, but do even better yeah. at date. So, so it yeah. seems like the the clear solution here is TRT export at date with the exactly. appropriate calibrations so that you don't lose too much accuracy in that in date transition. Yeah. And also th this is what, uh, yeah, this is uh, what you can find inside the ultra repository, right? So these are the uh, images. Uh, these are the models that I downloaded. And yeah, as you yeah. can see, like, yeah. So- And these are our own have... TRT profiles also right here in this speed A100 column. Uh, yeah. These are very fast, uh, but they're also running on an A100 GPU. So these exactly. are also at 640 image size, batch size one. Right, right. And, uh, oh yeah, and uh, I have this uh, one as well. So I uh, I checked on three devices, right? So this is the Orin uh, 32 GB and the Orin <laughs> NX 16 GB. So this is the one that I showed uh, a few minutes ago, the Recomputer J4012 with uh, 100 tops. And this is the J, uh, J2021 with 21 tops. So we have 21 tops, 100 tops, and uh, 200 tops, right? So, oh, okay. so, okay. so that's the, so we can have a comparison between uh, the devices uh, hmm. for the benchmark. So it's interesting. There's not, uh, there's not a linear ramp in speed with a linear ramp in tops. It looks like there's uh, maybe like a floor, some operations that, uh, that aren't 
like fully optimized to, I guess, exploit additional tops. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, if you see like, uh, yeah, you are right. That's not linear. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I think, I think that makes sense though. Uh, it's not quite that easy. Like for example, the, the very small models, like the nano models also, mm -hmm. like you'll start to see, or what I've noticed or what I've observed is that uh, if we have a model with say half the flops, it doesn't run half as fast. So it's not, uh, in general, those two things correlate together and it looks like the tops also uh, correlate, but uh, not sometimes as you'd expect. But, uh, yeah. but we definitely see improvements here as we increase the tops and for the higher power devices, we definitely get more frames per second. For sure, for sure. And also I have this uh, another type of graph because for this one, uh, like we are running different models on a single device and doing the uh, graph, right? So mm -hmm. I have an plotted another graph where you have one model and you compare three devices, right? Uh, mm, okay. So oh, that's, you okay. have YOLO V8, yeah. So the, it's a different view of the same data big, then. Different beef, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we have the Xavier NX, uh, 21 tops, 100 tops, 200 tops, three devices. Uh, wow, this is really informative. Each, uh, each model, right? Okay. So, so we can really yeah, like, see this, like, is, this is really good stuff. We, we definitely have to write a blog post and uh, I think share this on the <laughs> repository. This is very informative. I think it'll answer a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, I think for sure uh, we can do, uh, you can, we can officially post on the uh, Ultra Analytics uh, documentation, right? Yeah. About the Jetson. So, yeah. uh, oh, that's the other Jetson, thing. Yeah, we, uh, benchmarks. Yeah. Jetson. Yeah. yeah. That's something I'd like to say. We got a lot of criticism in Yolo V5 for having weak documentation and uh, the criticism was correct. So we've done a lot of work now with Yolo V8. We've improved the documentation uh, substantially. We put a lot of effort into it. So it's, it's much more informative, it's a much better resource and we're continuing to improve it too. So I think this would be great to uh, add to the docs also. Right. And yeah, so this is the biggest model, the YOLO V8 text model comparing with the three devices, right? So okay. yeah, so 24, 46 and 75 with 21 mm -hmm. tops, 100 tops and 200 tops. Yeah, four in eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and also like one more thing, um, there's this, uh, I showed you before the AGX, this particular device, the AGX Orin developer kit, right? Mm -hmm. So that is a that is also by that is actually officially by Nvidia, right? Uh, that developer okay. kit, <laughs> and if if you have the developer kit, you can emulate all these uh, uh, devices. So you can emulate a Nano uh, four, eight, eight, sixteen. All these six oh, devices can be emulated on that device. So, so, so what is the benefit? So if you want, if you want to uh, maybe uh, test a particular module uh, model uh, mm -hmm. on the device, but you don't, you still don't have the device, but you have a AGX or in dev kit. So you mm -hmm. can uh, verify the device and you can make sure what exact device that you want to deploy for the, for your uh, app, like industrial or other like commercial application, right? So maybe okay. uh, if you have an Orin NX AGB 70 tops, maybe that's too much for your application. So maybe then you want to emulate Orin Nano 4 GB 20 tops. And if you wow, emulate that- interesting. So yeah, so if yeah. you don't know which hardware yeah. you want, you can exactly. get the Orin developer kit, you can emulate the different ones and uh, see the, the minimum that you require uh, for your yes. application and then go okay. ahead and purchase those and save yourself some money, right. okay. Yeah. Very interesting. This is very useful for the industry, actually. If they yeah. want to maybe deploy like 1,000, like, like, you know, Jetsons uh, uh, right. deploy at scale, then this right. would be a really good starting point, uh, you know, to mm -hmm. do the emulation at first. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Like, Shanta, thank you for these numbers. It's been uh, yeah. really interesting. Actually, I've learned a lot yeah. myself. <laughs> learning every day actually so i didn't actually know any ai until about four years ago and that's when i started getting interested so i'm pretty much self-taught in all of this and it's by seeing demos like this and uh just learning from the experts okay so i'm going over to youtube and i see we've got a few questions here so uh, all right let me scroll down here and let's see okay so uh opaluso is asked about quantization on edge devices and should we expect a Yellow V8 paper soon? Hopefully including some benchmarks. Yeah, so the paper is a hot topic. I think I get asked this every live session. The reason there's no paper, is, there's two reasons. So the first one is that uh, we're focusing on adding features and fixing bugs in YOLO. Uh, so we are a small team and we're trying to do a lot. And 
I think the most value for the users is by uh, adding new features. So we've been really working on a lot of these, uh, most recently tracking, now pose estimation. And uh, also if we had written paper, for example, at launch, then we'd have to update it. Uh, so since things keep changing, keep improving, and we keep adding features, uh, we're waiting until things settle a bit to really focus on the paper. Uh, but for quantization, uh, yes, we have a export tutorial for YOLO v5 that covers quantization. And we're going to be migrating that and updating that for TRT and also in date quantization in a number of different formats, uh, including ones like TF Lite and Core ML. Okay, uh, let's see here. What do we have? Okay, let's see. Dragon Sage says, does YOLO v8 support NMS natively on these devices? That's a good question. Uh, so for most tasks, except classification, you're going to need NMS, which is a non-maximal suppression module. So different export formats handle this differently. For some of them, uh, we can pipeline these together into one model. Like CoreML does this really well. And we have an NMS argument during YOLO V8 export that you can pass, and it'll automatically pipeline that for you. Uh, other formats don't support pipelining yet. And for these formats, we apply Torch NMS. So you can, for example, export a tensor RT model. And once you have that, you can load that up again with YOLO. Uh, you simply point to the TRT model instead of a PyTorch model. It'll load up just like a PyTorch model and you can run inference with it. It'll be accelerated, uh, but it's still using the Torch NMS, uh, which will be GPU accelerated. So uh, we're working on, I think, adding Onyx support for that and possibly TensorRT support for that also. This would allow you, for example, to deploy a solution without needing the torch dependency, which is uh, pretty heavy. So uh, for very small edge devices, there's added benefits. Uh, we can work on that. If you have expertise on that, please contribute. Uh, we'd love PRs. Ooh, okay, <laughs> let's see. Uh, let me see if I can yeah, find I, a question I think for that's a question yeah. for me. Yeah. Oh yeah, so what do you PCS think? So PCS Agri is asking, <laughs> yeah. Are the new Jetson dev devices support power from 40 pin, right? So yeah, so that's a good question. Actually, uh, uh, the problem uh, is uh, the, the new Jetson devices need uh, at least uh, 12 volt at five amps, right? It's, so for example, the Orin NX device uh, that I showed you before based on the recomputer J4012, that device needs 12 volt at five amps. So the problem is, uh, the, uh, the, the power, uh, the maximum uh, current from the pin can, uh, cannot have five amps, which means you cannot power in from the, uh, from the 40 pin. So, so, so it's not possible. Yeah. You need to have, you need to connect the, the barrel jack uh, to the board to power the device. That's the only way. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, okay. So I had a question about that, actually. I was thinking of the, the battery connection that you mentioned. Yeah, so that's the RTC, right? That's the RTC battery. Okay, and yeah. uh, so you need a 12-volt battery, uh, like a lithium polymer battery, that you could hook up to that, and then you could, oh, no, no, you no. could run this remotely? The, the battery is the for the RTC. Like, that, that's just to retain the time, just like a... Like a oh, PC, it's just a very small battery. battery. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. The, the coin cell one, right? That's just okay. to retain the time and the date, right? Okay. That's RTC I was thinking battery. of a different type of battery that would run the entire thing. Oh, no, no. It's the same thing okay. that you have in on the motherboard. But apart okay. from that, if you want to power the device, the only way to power it is through the, the barrel jack connector uh, on, the, okay. on the board, uh, which needs to power uh, through 12 volts uh, at 5 amperes. Yeah. So, okay. because it's running at like 25, uh, it can have 25 watts uh, maximum power. So, okay. yeah, 25 to 30, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So Got that's it. a requirement from the, All right. from the device, yeah. And let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna pull one last question here. Uh, oh, actually, let's see, Brian Merritt has a good question. He says, are there examples of transfer learning for YOLO V8? I would like to save GPU training time by adding a new image. Uh, or set of images specific to individual applications to existing models that do uh, 90%. So, okay, the term transfer learning is uh, it's a bit of a blanket term. Uh, typically it's meant to imply that you start from a pre-trained model rather than starting from scratch. Uh, and in that sense, this is the default use case for YOLO V8. Uh, so the tutorials that we have at the docs and everything you'll see, uh, it'll always show you loading up say an official model and then training that model on a new data set. 
Uh, so in this sense, what happens is if you have, say, a data set of cats and dogs, we'll strip off the output layer of the pre-trained model since it'll have different number of classes and we'll create a new head that's randomly initialized. Uh, so your model will be trained. Uh, the majority of the model will have already have learned low level features, things like edges, colors, textures, and this dramatically reduces training time. Uh, and of course, this is all happening automatically. Um, and it's the default use case, really. Uh, you can always start from a scratch model, but we wouldn't recommend that. Uh, sometimes the question is uh, maybe like one past this. And the question is, uh, I like Coco data set. I just want to add a class to that. Like I want it to also learn and choose. And the answer to that is that there's something called catastrophic forgetting. So the entire model is applied to learning your data. Every parameter in the model is focused. Uh, we get gradients from them and we update every parameter so that it's 100% applied to improving on your specific data set that you're presenting to the model. This means that as it learns the new data, if you don't keep presenting it the old data, it's going to forget that data. And that's actually a benefit because that means that every resource inside the model can be dedicated to the data that you're presenting to it. Uh, otherwise, you'd have uh, subpart training. And uh, so the short answer here is that you can't simply add a class to a model. Uh, you can, you just have to combine both data sets. That's very easy in YOLO. You just put them both together. Uh, you have to make sure that the classes don't overlap. So you want the classes to be complementary. So for example, if you want to train on Coco and another class, you simply label your new data set with classes starting from index 80, since Coco has 80 classes. Uh, so it's a little complicated, but uh, that's the basic answer. Transfer learning happens automatically by default. Uh, and if you'd like to add classes to an existing data set, train on both, making sure that the classes don't conflict. Okay, and one last question here, that's a pretty good one by fifth person. He says, how can we deploy YOLO V8 on Android devices running on the edge? Okay, this is a great question. So uh, very soon here, we are making YOLO V8 available on Hub. Hub is our no-code deployment tool just at hub.ultralytics.com. This allows for automatic deployment to Android. So you can train your model. You can see it on our demo app. And I know fifth person's next question is going to be, that's great, but how can I use this on my app? And we have an answer for that. We are creating frameworks that will be open source. And uh, you can just copy that code and the model will work directly in your app. So we're going to make it really easy for you to also use the train models directly in your custom app. Uh, on Android and on iOS also with TF Lite format and CoreML. So that's it. And uh, wow, this one really, uh, we've talked a lot. Okay, we're almost up to 50 minutes here. It's supposed to be 30 minutes, but looks like we had a lot of fun stuff to talk about. All right, like Shanta. Well, yeah, and also I think, yeah, and, I think uh, I would like to share uh, one of the tutorials that we made last week. Absolutely. So just, I think to close off our discussion, I think yeah, I can uh, yeah, show off the tutorial so that others can also, uh, you know, access that. So this is the tutorial that uh, I did last week to deploy YOLO V8 on the NVIDIA Jetson using TensorT and, and DeepStream SDK, right? So you can uh, visit this link. Uh, so this link we can attach in the YouTube description. Other, others, everyone can follow this link. Uh, oh, great. To deploy the, uh, uh, yeah. So you can follow through uh, the tutorial and also it has, it has like the, the steps on how to use the TRT exec tool as well, so that uh, everyone can, you know, benchmark uh, uh, the models by themselves as well. So- Okay, well, this yeah. looks really informative. So, yeah, so this okay, is Alexander. actually based on, uh, yeah, so based on the DeepStream uh, SDK. So, and also uh, finally, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, I will, uh, so I have this, uh, this slide. Uh, sorry. Okay. This slide. Hey, Lakshanta, if you if you paste me that link in our chat, I think we can paste it in the YouTube chat and uh, let everybody else see this too. Oh, for sure. Uh, the 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 wiki, right? Yeah, this one. Yeah, this wiki link. It looks really interesting. Oh, I see okay. we have more so questions I will... too. I just scroll to the bottom here. <laughs> yeah, I will attach the <laughs> link, the wiki link. Uh, yeah. So, no, this one. Oh. Okay, I've got a really good question I can answer here. So Joy Timmermans is asking about batch sizes. So we've got uh, two really good options here. So TensorRT by default will export at a fixed size. 
This means that uh, you have to pick your image size and your batch size at export. But we've got this really cool argument, it's dynamic. Uh, so if you export, say YOLO, export, dynamic, uh, or in Python, dynamic equals true, then you can pass a batch size. Uh, and this will be considered a maximum batch size. So if you pass, say, batch equals 16, then you can now run this exported TRT model at any batch size up to 16. And the same with the image sizes. It'll automatically accept different image sizes. Uh, so dynamic is really cool. Of course, there's no free lunch. And I think there's a, a bit of a performance hit. I haven't quantified it, but I'm assuming that it's very small. So, uh, so yeah, that's your answer. Uh, if you know you're going to have five cameras, for example, instead of one, uh, you should probably export a fixed batch size of five, which is also an option. You don't need to use batch size one. That's just the default during a fixed export. Uh, but if you're not sure how many cameras you're going to use, dynamic argument is the way to go. And I think that's shown again in the Ultralytic stocks, just at docs.ultralytics.com slash modes slash export. Okay. <laughs> and let's see here. Uh, did you paste that link in the chat for us? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did paste the link on the chat. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm not seeing that. Did you see so paste it in our Zoom chat? Oh. Oh, on the Zoom. Okay, I paste. Oh, sorry. Oh, you paste it directly paste on YouTube. It on the, Even better. Yeah, directly on YouTube. That works, Okay, right? perfect. All right, that's, uh, yeah. I don't see it. But if you said you did it, I'm sure you did. So, okay. <laughs> don't you see on YouTube? I sent on YouTube. Huh? See, I, the last comment I see is by Dragon Sage. Uh, he just says, thanks, great discussion. But oh, my uh, comment is if you pass that. it to us okay, afterwards. I will send you. Oh, yeah, maybe I got lost up there. And of course, we'll update the description also with that. So, okay, okay. super interesting yeah. chat. Uh, thanks a lot for joining yeah. us, Alexantha, uh, from Shenzhen in China, where the seed yeah. uh, headquarters is, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, Glenn. It's, it was a really nice discussion. And I think, uh, yeah, so if, uh, so this is the last slide that I have. And if, okay. if you go to this, uh, this link, 2023.c.cc, uh, you can uh, explore all the devices. Uh, that uh, we are planning to launch in 2023, uh, as I mentioned before. So uh, we have a product uh, catalog and you can learn all about uh, the exciting stuff uh, that will Amazing. Uh, come out uh, soon. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm very happy uh, to be a part of uh, this uh, today's discussion. And I think it's, it was really informative as well. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. I've, I've, I've learned a lot personally. I'm sure the users <laughs> have as well. All our viewers. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, Alexandra. And to everybody listening, thank you also. If you have any remaining questions, uh, feel free to put them here on YouTube or drop them in our GitHub uh, as an issue or a discussion. So, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Bye. Bye.